Runs kindly for Morrison. It's Cal Morrison! <laughs> Just listen to this, please! Spencer takes over. It's Brad Spencer! It's in the back of the net! It's Donaldson. Driving forwards. Called Donaldson! That is simply ridiculous! There's Tom Lang! Oh my word! Unbelievable! Phenomenal! Incredible! Invincible! This is Falkirk Daft. With Behind the Wall and the Falkirk football fans in training. Can't start fire. Can't start fire without a spark. Brad Spencer's on fire. You played the firm and off the park. Yes! 41 not out as the Jags got stung by the Bairns. Welcome to Folk at Daft. I am John McAnally and any football chant, which is basically a Bruce Springsteen song, I am here for it. If the Ultras can come up with a maybe an ACDC style chant now for a player or perhaps an Oasis one, that would be great as well. But oh, unbelievable scenes yesterday and I'm joined to talk about them by the ginger god of Paul himself, the one-man band in the main stand. It is Ross Wade, everyone. Hey, pal, how you doing? You good? I'm all right. Well, hold on. Ah, so we're going to be here for the working man. Oh, good lad. Good lad. You know, you've just mentioned Oasis there. They've got the John McGlynn one. Uh, do that, actually. got a John McGlynn one, so the Oasis is ticked off. So we just, need an AC, we just need mm. an ACDC one. So Kieran, uh, Beardy will get on the case for that and let's have an ACDC based chant for uh, one of the players. Thank you very much. Um, how are you? Very well, very well. I just, do you know, as the weeks roll on, the weekends roll on, you just can't stop smiling about the football. Eh? And um, as you've <sighs> 41 league games unbeaten is just a, like a phenomenal stat. Like there's loads of stats kicking about in terms of like, I saw uh, our, our pal of the podcast, Stevie Beveridge, he messaged earlier on saying, oh, it's going to be 500 days next week. And you're like, my God, 500 days without losing a game of football. Granted, we have lost a couple of cup games, but in terms of the league, that's just phenomenal. And we are chasing some big club records across Europe. Uh, with some of these unbeaten re- league runs, so it's so so close. I it's think so, so close. Barcelona was like forty four. They went forty four league games unbeaten. So I have I have a little list in front of me, John Boy. So um, we're obviously on forty one now. Uh, the mighty Nottingham Forest, my English, uh, my dad's team, my English team, they're at forty two. Barca's at forty three. Um, you've then got Arsenal, UV, and Leverkusen on forty nine. Uh, Bayern Munich's on fifty three. Celtic hold the British record just now at 56 and then you've got AC Milan who are on 58 so don't get me wrong we're, it's a, that 58 feels like a long long way away right and it's a tough tough old ass oh. but Forest, Barca and um, maybe even Arsenal these records are all in sight and yeah. who knows who knows I know we'll, we'll, we'll get there from, from uh, our resident um, Stat O'Donnell Johnson has uh, helped us along with that so thanks Don I've got our stat for you later on as we talk about the game against Thistle. Um, I, it was, I, I don't think I've had Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen's constantly been played in every Falkirk supporter's house, I think, uh, I think since so. the game yesterday. Absolutely, yes. No, I've, my, my eldest daughter, I, I caught her singing along to it earlier on, so it must have been catching on. Fantastic. Great great work. The young team are getting into the boss now as well. Listen, anything that encourages you, anyone to listen to Bruce Springsteen music, I'm here for it because he is the man. Uh, listen, I just wanted to talk about celebrity fans. I saw a photo, uh, Fred on the Come On You Bairns uh, Facebook and it just appears that we don't have much celebrity fans. Though I was intrigued, um, there, was, there was a comment, I mean, Ian Armitage who plays young Sheldon, mm. he's about as, as, as good as it gets, I think. Uh, someone suggests the Cocteau Twins, Grangemouth Band, very, very good. Apparently, they're not into football. Arab Strap, I think, aren't into football either, even though they're from Falkirk. And actually, they've never played a good gig in Falkirk before. Do you know that? What at all? No, I didn't no. know that. Strap have wow. never played a gig in Falkirk. Actually, <laughs> I, I messaged Aidan Moffat and said, have you guys ever played a game in, a gig in Falkirk? And he says, no, they were meant to have played Rosie's and then it got cancelled because it was fighting or something like that. But I don't think <laughs> Arab Strap are Falkirk supporters. But I did find one, it was on this thread, that um, I don't know if you watch a, a programme called Supernatural, um, no. Ross, 
But there's a, a witch in that, uh, I think it's Ruth Connell's her, her name, she's from Bonnie Bridge, and apparently she's been spotted at the Falkirk Stadium quite a few times. I have to clarify, you said a witch? Yeah, in, in the TV show, she's a oh, witch. Oh, right, I see, right, okay. Right, not right, a right. real witch in real I, life. I was gonna, so she plays a part yes. of a witch. I thought, I thought she was like one of these modern day witches there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, so yeah, and so young Sheldon's about as good as it gets, and of course, our big friend Grant, who's in Still Game. Indeed. He could be the most famous person that I we think have. Pro, but I, I think uh, the witch from Supernatural and uh, Big Grant, I think, are probably our most famous yeah. supporters. But listen, if we right. know any uh, celebrity Falkirk supporters, let's keep our eye out. Maybe we could get celebrities to adopt Falkirk as their team, because we are devoid of celebrity fans. We are, yeah. Well, you get the occasional one into the studio. Can you not just like um, throw a scarf around someone and say, here, mm. I'm going to get a picture of you? Um, That's a good idea. Everything. That's a good idea. So next um, big celebrity that wanders into the radio station, I'll just get a, I take my Falkirk scarf and get a picture with them if you just claim them. That's what that's, we'll it. that's how we'll work it. That's how we'll work it. Well, anyway, uh, if you know of any, get in touch with us on our socials. Um, got to thank the Falkirk Football Fans and Training for their continued sponsor of this podcast. And of course, they are the main sock sponsor this year as well. So if you've got to get a pair of socks, you'll get the T8s logo on them. Um, get down to the stadium every Monday 8 to 9, Tuesday 7.30 to 8.30. Um, if you want to get in touch with the lads, the links are in the bio of the podcast. Um, they're basically supporting each other through football, making memories. And of course, they were in hospitality yesterday, by the way. I saw yeah, where, where, where was our invite? I must, uh, I must have missed that. You, you didn't need any more invites to hospitality. You, <laughs> you get a season <laughs> ticket there. But uh, I, Dougie, I saw Dougie. It was just, uh, I, was, I was walking at the ground yesterday and I saw Dougie all suited and booted. And I waved to him saying, Jesus, he's in there again. So, shock horror. I suspect the usual suspects would have been in there yesterday. Uh, I can imagine players. so. Yeah. Um, Fair play to them, though. As you said, John, it's putting a, a ton of cash into the football club ab- and uh, just taking ab- over. Absolutely. You know, and they, 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 they put so much into it. And like I say, it's a great group of lads. And if you are looking for... Like I said last week, if you're looking for new friends, get yourself down to the T8s every Monday and Tuesday and you'll certainly make memories and maybe get an invite to one of our hospitality days. So the Lava Cup's been confirmed as well for Lava uh, Cup next confirmed year? for next season as well, so looking forward to that. We'll obviously be following that story as that progresses and, and give you more details on that across the season. Uh, big thanks, of course, as well to Behind the Wall. I've not been in this week. Um after my escapades last weekend in there. Uh, but stay local, eat and drink global. Get yourself down there um, this Friday because the U2 tribute band W2 are playing. Um, and tickets are only 7.50 for that. It starts at oh, 8 o'clock eh? and it'll be up the stairs. Get them on event right now. But aye, it's behind the wall. Like I say, they, they put on loads of great bands in there. Ash even played there once, which I love that. In fact, I think I was speaking to Brian and saying that when we did the Folk at Daft Live, he says, this is probably the busiest this room's been since we had Ash here. And I thought, what an accolade that is. That is an accolade, an accolade doesn't it? Matters. And of course, they are running the bus up and down to the ground. It's uh, £5 and then you get your free pint when you go back to the pub as well so it's a brilliant offer and uh, the buses do fill up really quickly so get in touch with uh, the guys at the bar and, and they'll sort you out scotty will, if you give scotty a call during the week you can book your tickets get on there and of course they're running buses much like uh, they've started running buses to away games now as well which is great 10 pound and on the bus and i guess the same uh, offer applies in that as well that you go back to the pub you get a pint as well which is fantastic so yep. um, Greenock obviously is next weekend and I think there's still some spaces left so get in touch with Scotty at the bar if you want to go down it's £12.50 because it's a bit further out but you, you can get down there get on the bus with Behind the Ball boys go back to the bar afterwards get a few pints in there as well so all good and of course Folk at Die Live will be coming to Behind the Wall details to be confirmed very very soon I promise you that I'm hoping to firm up everything in the next week and hopefully next week we can let you know when tickets will go on sale for that because we had a great laugh the last time we did it um, and hopefully ross no disasters this time and you'll be there yeah that's crossed. the hope that's the hope no disasters no family emergencies and no, i'll exactly. be there with bells on so exactly. yeah because they all wait. came to see you anyway do you know what i mean i'm, I'm just i'm, I'm just inside that do you know what i mean i'm not, I'm not sure i think they laugh with you and they were probably expected to laugh at me so it was a bit of both a bit of both but listen i'm looking forward to it. um i'm really really hoping in the nicest way because you know obviously we want Falkirk to be exposed to a lot of media and stuff but i really hope that game doesn't get moved to the friday night because that will kibosh 
our plan of attack, won't it? So we really <laughs> want to beat Scotland to avoid this game, <laughs> like the break. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we'll, we'll find. We'll, that's where we're kind of holding off at the moment. We're just waiting for the fixtures to be given. I'm sure. But are are doing their best though, because obviously they're they're making themselves as shite as possible so that it doesn't look like an interesting game. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, listen, some news for you from the cop as ever. Uh, flagpole watch. The flagpole has been moved. Now, I don't know if someone was listening to this podcast, as we po- pointed out last week, that if the TV gantry goes in there, the flag would be covered. But the flagpole has now moved into the corner at the North yeah. Stand. Far, it looks far, far better in the corner, it doesn't does, it? It does, it does. So thank you to whoever listen. If you're listening to this podcast and decide to make the move because of that, thanks very much. More flag, flagpole influencers, Ross. That's what we are here. I think we've mentioned flags on every episode so far. <laughs> I think the flag chat is done now, right? The flag chat is done. We don't need to mention the flag anymore, but it's up there flying proudly um, in the north. Uh, west uh, corner of the stand. Is it the northwest or the north? Uh, northeast. Northeast corner of the yeah. stand. I'm just like, yeah, my directions are terrible. Um, got to talk about the Falkirk women. We're playing at, at the stadium this afternoon. Yeah. And it's made a big difference. A 6 2 pumping of Dryborough Athletic. Brilliant. 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 And our girl, our captain, scored the first one. Well done, Anna. Absolutely superb work. Uh, so loads of goals from the girls um, there. I'm just looking down to see the other scorers from this afternoon. Uh, Mary got one. Uh, Iona got. Iona Bridges, I think maybe got. I think two. she got two. Iona, Iona today. Yeah. Uh, Olivia Murphy got one. So it was they're flying absolutely fine. Brogan Anderson as well. Uh, got one as well. So well done to the girls. Six two wins, and that's uh, bouncing back after the disappointing defeat um, last weekend. And I actually heard from um, Josh, who uh, had got in touch about saying there was a couple of uh, reasons that they maybe didn't do as well as they expected last weekend. But they're back to winning ways and loving that. That's two wins and three now for the girls. Love that work. So well done, girls. Six two and uh, we'll keep you abreast of the fixtures and what's happening. Um don't <laughs> laugh, Ross the Jesus Listen, I don't know if you meant that, but that was uh <laughs> 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 you've got a, you've got a disgusting mind, Ross. Right. Sorry, uh, sorry, everyone. Sorry, we'll keep everyone. you informed. Is maybe a better term of any fixtures that are going on. Uh, a couple other bits and bobs from the club, the Bairns Business Club. I've been gaining you, Ross. You know more about the Bairns Business Club than I do. You put into it, don't you? Uh, yeah, no, it's a brilliant, uh, a brilliant uh, group of people um, who are networking. Uh, in the business community, but they're doing so in a really positive way for the football club because all the proceeds from the business club's events and also the membership fees that they take in every year um, helps the club uh, enhance various things at the stadium, uh, puts different projects into place that means the money doesn't actually have to come out of the club's budget and therefore doesn't come out of John McGlynn's budget. So, um, yeah, they've, I, I, I saw the, the video that they put out last week, the club, uh, and it was the, the business club had uh, purchased something called a game-ready machine, <laughs> which apparently, amazing. yeah, I learned something new. I don't know about you. But uh, apparently the system itself, I'll read verbatim, is a compression unit that simultaneously pumps ice-cold water into a padded bag that can mask any joint in the body. So there you go. Um, So I assume that must have cost a bit of money. Yeah. to get that um and obviously it's, it, it they go on to say how that how much they've uh, helped improve Falkirk tv over the summer as well in terms of equipment and uh microphones so yeah it's i think you can tell really, that actually really on, on the coverage of Falkirk tv that is, is improved a uh, shout out to drew barton who's been a guest pundit he was on commentary duties yesterday josh and i know josh was at cat fishing the bottle man because he messaged me during the week to ask about the parking situation out in ghosting uh, i don't know if sean was maybe working for the bbc or if he was with josh at cat sean was i, th- I was watching the uh, sports scene last night now i could be wrong i think he was the, the comms on dundee united versus st johnston Amazing. i think that's what he was doing so i Brilliant. Oh, super, but, 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 absolutely brilliant absolutely fantastic for sean uh so yeah drew was on comms with uh, aiden nesbitt and did a fantastic job aiden sounded brilliant on it as well actually from the the highlights that yeah. i heard so uh good to see him in the stand just and hopefully he's not far away from making his comeback on the pitch as well uh board update came out this week just i mean it, there was nothing major in it just kind of 
looking back at the start of the season that we made. Of course, <laughs> there was the ask for money as standard at the end. <laughs> Join up to the Falcon Support Society, which you always say anyway. Uh, sign up to the Falcon Support Society because obviously it's very important that we put money into the club as supporters because we don't have those sugar daddies that we so desire. So we are the supporters need to make things happen. Um, it would be lovely to have like a really... Maybe the witch from Supernatural has got a bit of cash. It was a very successful show. I don't That's know... true. Yeah, and, and let's not forget, I'm sure Grant probably got a, a pretty penny for his still game. Uh, he must he must be able to uh, ah, exa ah, exactly. thousands, thousands in as well. Exactly. I mean, maybe, yeah, so let's find, we need to, this is why we need to find the celebrity Falkirk supporters so we can get some money put into the club. You know, we need a Ryan Reynolds, we need like a Deadpool or Rob McKerney to come into this club and uh, <laughs> stick some money in. So if you know any superheroes or any actors with a bit of cash, they can maybe put money into the club. That would be grand. Um, but yeah, Ruth uh, Connell is the closest we've got to a celebrity supporter at the moment. So if Ruth, you're listening, you've got a bit of cash, please, please get in touch. And hope you're signed up to Falcon Support Society. But yeah, uh, and the board update, it was nothing. I mean, they've shortened them down as well, which I was glad to see. It wasn't the usual dissertation <laughs> that we're used to as well. But it's you know always what? good. Like I've said before, the communication is great. Aye. It's great to see it, you know. And uh, it, it really is. Uh, the, the communication, if you think back to a few years ago right. when we when we got told almost nothing um, and then you, you get hit with some bad news in the media. But no, it's, the communication is brilliant. And um, obviously it kind of follows on, as you said, it's, it, it ends on a, on a real positive note because obviously we're in a really positive place on the park and off the pitch. Now the commercial guys... Um, are, are doing everything that they can as well. I see they're, they're now obviously looking for a, a sponsor for the Crunchy, eh, for the Kim McAllister stand as well, aren't they? So um, the guys are doing everything that they can do to bring cash into. I know, eh, what would you want as a, a sponsor for the Kim McAllister? Obviously Cadbury's Crunchy would be... Cadbury's the would be the obvious choice, wouldn't it? Yeah. It really would. I think um, they've tried to do stuff with that in the past. I spoke to, uh, I, I believe, uh, Graham Stewart, um, who's, who's in the commercial team, did some with Crunchy in the past. I mean, it's got to be a big ass to try and get Crunchy. I think they did. Did, did Graham not say something like um, that Cadbury's had changed a lot of their marketing strategy and they weren't doing a lot of local and they might have even been bought over by another company yeah, as well, which is, is them. But if you could get a big national company, that's that would be fantastic. But then maybe there's maybe there's local firms who who, who maybe don't have a, a big exposure through the club or have a, a, a smaller exposure just now. And... They fancy getting involved, so I'm sure the guys are really approachable in terms of like deals and how. I don't. I, I don't know how much it would take. Like I, I'm. I'm assuming it's not like a few hundred quid job. It's probably into the thousands. But they don't get I any think... ideas of the Falkirk Daft Kim McAllister. <laughs> yeah, Ross no, Ray. I'm banned. Uh, you're, you're banned. You're, you're, I, I'm there. in charge of the post strings now in this podcast because yeah. you just you just like we'll just spend it. We'll just sponsor this. We'll sponsor that. Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> That's that's true. That's true. <laughs> Our part sponsorship. Yep, let's sign us up. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I think. Um, see if you think about it. It's a, it's sold out every game, right? There's photo like the amount of photos that are taken of the fans in there, the signage that's there. You'd think somebody listening might go. Do you know what? That sounds like an absolute brilliant thing for me. It might help. The, it's going to help the club as well. So I'm sure the guys will uh, appreciate a call or an email. Absolutely, absolutely right. Listen, we're going to be speaking to we've got my, one of my celebrity, another one of my celebrity friends is coming on the show to preview the Morton game uh, later on. George Bowie from Clyde One Breakfast will be on. He's a Morton supporter, uh, probably there's their celebrity supporter. They've got George uh, who supports them, so we'll speak to him about the Morton game a bit later on on the podcast. But first, let's look back at Partick Thistle yesterday. I will speak to another podcaster. There's another celebrity Falkirk fan. He's been doing Walking Down Hope Street for several years now. Uh, if you've not listened to Walking Down Hope Street, it basically interviews ex Falkirk players. Great lesson. Uh, and he's going to be on this podcast. So please welcome Lewis Hogan. Thanks for having me on, guys. No problem, sir. Um, how are you? Uh, yeah, good. Certainly happy after yesterday's result as well. So. I know, we'll get into that uh, and talk about the game just in a minute, Lewis. But we've got to talk about walking down Hope Street. You guys have been on the go way before we were <laughs> thinking about doing a podcast. Um, how have you enjoyed doing that? Yeah, yeah. No, it, to be fair, I, I, I feel like I'm in a, quite a privileged position to, to be able to interview these uh, sort of ex-players. A lot of them, 
or well, certainly some of them I, I never saw play at all. So you know you've got to do a, quite a bit of research into their their career, and you find out a lot of interesting stuff about it. But it was a, it was Colin McFarlane's idea um, to to do this. Obviously, you hear about all the the famous players and you hear their stories, but you never really hear what happens with Falkirk players. So um, so yeah, I mean it's it's great to do it. I love it. Um, our producer is one of our pals from school, Gavin, as well. So. Yeah, it's it's been great, and thankfully we're uh, back up and running again. Good, uh, you're back. You, we're going to get another episode soon, then. Uh, yes, yeah, so I think it'll be sort of. I, I think it'll be in a couple of weeks. We'll we'll sort of announce who it is uh, next week. But oh, can, come you, give on, a, Lewis, can you give us a can you give us a clue at all? Come or? on, Lewis, you're on the come on, you're on the big <laughs> show now. Let us know, let us know who it is. Come on. Um, I'll, I'll give I'll give you a couple of clues. He, he was right. a defender in the eighties, and he played for Scotland as well. Hmm. That's all you're getting. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. We'll, right. We'll work that out. We'll, we'll work that out. one out. Uh huh. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm. Brilliant. Um, I look forward. What's What's been your favourite one that you've done, Lewis? Uh, do you know? I've, I think about that quite a lot. I've been asked that before. Um, I don't. It's the. It's the. See if you see all of them. I'm really. I'm really proud no, you. It's. It's not. It's not all of them. There's. Each person has a different story. Like you've got people like Tam Scobies that was really emotional. Um, you've got people like Simon Stainrod and like Kevin McAllister who are obviously club, uh, icons, legends. You know, and to be sitting across from them, like asking them questions. Yeah, it's, uh, it's surreal, isn't it? it it's surreal. Surreal. Because you guys actually do it face to face, as opposed to us uh, that would just wing it on Zoom. That, that well, that's it. I mean, COVID was was that that was opportunity to hit the guys in Australia. So yeah, but Kevin to... obviously is over there now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, Kevin James and uh, John Baird. But I mean, like you've got so like Jim Jeffries, John Baird, and Craig Brown all spoke for about three hours. So you had to cut that down to an hour. <laughs> or just over an hour. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff there yeah. that we can't or we haven't put out. Um, and then there's also a lot of stuff that we can't put out as well. Fantastic. See, this is the professionalism that we need to learn from, Ross. We just sit <laughs> on Zoom, talk shite, and leave it all in. Uh, you know, they, yeah. do, they even do, they say they do research as well, Ross. This is, this is this, you know, this is. What's research? I'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking notes. <laughs> um, uh, no, it is good though. But I think, you know, it's it's a different format to, to what you guys do. You, the, I mean, I love how we've got this sort of weekly sort of fan, fanzine that keeps the fans in, in touch with the club. I think it's great. The, the way that the club is, or everything that's going with the club just now, it's unbelievable, you know, considering where we were in the last sort of five years. Yeah. And now, you know, you look at the crowds at, at the stadium and everything. We didn't even have these crowds when we were in the Premier League. It's true. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wild. wild. <laughs> the growth and support has been amazing to see. Um, before we get into the game then, Lewis, we've got to ask you the standard questions. Can you remember your first uh, Falkirk match and who it was against? Um, I only have um, sort of small memories of my, my, my first game. Um, my first game was Andy Nichols' testimonial. So I was only I was only three years old. Wow. I didn't really like it. Um, I think I'm pretty sure I was taken home early by my dad. But um, you know, it, I've, I've I my English. I, I I follow Liverpool as well. Um, so I, I had that sort of affinity to Kenny Dalglish. He obviously wore the Falkirk strip that day. Um, to to the point that I sent um the photograph of him in the Falkirk strip and he signed it and sent it back. Oh, so. wow. What a <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, That's amazing. That's fantastic. But, but I'd say like the first proper game, so uh, my dad took me back to games when I was sort of 12 years old. So it was a uh, Sterling Albion at home with Eamon Bannon in charge and we won 5-2. There was oh, yeah, I remember that. Scarves. He kicked that day, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy Grave, he kicked up corner. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember that game. That was a crack. I didn't even know it was even bad. I remember uh, that was a good game. That. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Um, and we've been asking this season, who's the worst person to pull on the navy blue? In your opinion? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think I could, because I've, I've heard some some uh, guests haven't haven't given an opinion there, but I mean. A pro oh, Anderson the shite bag. That's that's yeah, well, the that's it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I think uh, I'd probably say like you know one of the, like Denon Lewis or 
uh, um, what was it, Homo and Evans, or you know these sort of guys. Oh, uh, the toe. Fa Fazan was awful as well, but I, I sort of think about the the players that didn't really get on with the fans, like Sir Joe Tortellano and that as well. Oh so. yeah. Oh, I remember Joe Tortellano? <laughs> Actually, no, that was that was that was hardcore. That Joe Tortellano. I remember. Did he give the fingers to the fans? I think he did. He did when he that was. He got jeered when he was. Um, oh no, he got cheered when he was getting subbed, and he came <laughs> to the choir and it just just gave the vickies. And I, yeah, I don't think he played again for the club. To be fair, no, um, no, I don't think so. Anyway. So Lewis, we're not going to see a Den and Lewis walking down Hope Street. <laughs> no, no, unless I get an invite out to it was at Weirdo of Islanders, you know. Oh yeah, Mallorca, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, can't. Imagine that walking down Stro uh, Hope Street or Casa de Moor or whatever they call it, <laughs> sitting around the campfire. <laughs> you do that, uh, good. I definitely don't fit in there. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's talk about yesterday's game though. It was Falk up to Partick Thistle one. Liam Henson and Brad Spencer with the goals, unchanged yeah. from last week. Not surprising considering we beat Hearts, though it was good to see Callum Morrison back on the bench along with Michael McKenna as well. Um, yeah. Still no sign of Aidan Nesbitt, though we did hear from him on commentary, so hopefully he's not far away. Um, yeah. Wow, this was the game, I think it was, this was the litmus test for 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 me. It's the, you know, a, a championship title contenders, albeit they're not having greatest starts to the season but this this was what separates the men for the boy yesterday and we passed Ross we did yeah uh it was two goals going on about 12 wasn't it so um and that I I think we would have dominated just today even if they had got uh that they didn't have that guy sent off um which is a silly silly <laughs> uh <laughs> yellow for diving however um I, I don't think it would have mattered. They, if anything, it, like I, I, I heard John McGlynn say, it, it, it hampered us a little bit with them going really defensive. Um, but I really don't think it would have made any difference. I think what we saw yesterday was that we are more than capable of doing some damage to the teams. The, the supposed top teams in this league, I think we're going to do them some damage this year. Maybe not every game, but the vast majority of games, if we turn up, we'll, we'll get something from the game. Yeah, I think I think certainly uh, I'd say after the first four, five minutes I was maybe a little bit worried because they did put us under a lot of pressure at that point. But then, yeah. you know, we sort of found our feet in the game. I mean, you you look at the stats. I think it was twenty one shots we had yeah. in the game. But it, it shows that at this level you've got to take your chances because even with ten men they can come back into it. So, um, but no, it was it was great to see. The, obviously, you know another win up against an established championship club um, and, you know, sort of extending ourselves at the top. Fair enough, Fair Air United have played one game more than us, but you can't ask for any more than three, three out of three, so. No, absolutely. Um, Donald Johnson, our resident start, says that's the best start we've had to season since the Ian McCall season um, yeah. in the last season at Brockville. Um, that was the, 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 we started off that season. Um, fine as well, so fantastic to see. I would take that outcome again. Oh, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Not, uh, not, not the decision to 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 not let us up, but obviously winning the league, you would take that every every day. Um, yeah, because what that that was about seven seven or eight wins on the spin that season, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah, I'm sure it was eight eight wins, and then we lost to our growth. That's was it right. Ambrose? Was it <laughs> right? So, so I think because we Stephen Rennie played in that game as well. So yeah. As well, going up there. Um, I it was you know like you said, Lewis. It was Thistle came out and they they put they started how I expect them to start, and they were you know there was a bit of pressure there at the start, but we settled down and got ourselves into the game again. We just had a few chances. Ethan Ross at the start of that game was a man possessed. That yeah. run down the left, and then he cut inside, and it was just. It was just like you thought, oh, that's going in, but it just yeah. curled slightly. But he was playing like a man possessed that first kind of 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, I mean, it was good that he got the start last week and, and that he retained the place. Yeah, I, I believe Morrison hadn't really trained through the week, but you know, you it, it seems to be Morrison and Miller are the ones to displace. But uh, you know, I think Ross has certainly shown that he's more than worthy of a start as well. And 
throughout the game, it was just little touches here and there, taking it away from players all the time. It's, yeah. I mean, pace wise, you had that boy on toast, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely had him. I mean, you could just tell. I, I don't, I don't think the, the problem with obviously that is that Calvin Miller goes out to the right, and I don't think he's as effective. Um, yeah. when he's out on the right, I thought, I thought he struggled a wee bit yesterday, Ross. Um, yeah, it, to be fair, it, I thought he did better. Um, yesterday versus the Hearts game from what I mean by that is in in terms of like against Hearts he was really reluctant to sort of throw a, a cross in with his right foot um, but yesterday he did hit the byline a few times get a good ball in um, but he does he, he tends to cut in which is which is his thing um, I would ideally I think I'd, I, I far prefer Calvin on the left but you can't drop either of them just now and I wouldn't want to because Callum uh, is, and I know we, we, we want Callum in and around the, the starting 11 in the squad but um, the boys don't deserve to be dropped uh, do, at this do current you think, time Ross, Do you think that he keeps the same 11 starting 11 next uh, Saturday? I, I, I think he will I think he will um, unless there's obviously something happens during the week with any of the players but no I think if everyone's fit uh, Nesbitt's not going to be back I heard um, from someone that watched the live feed of the game uh, yesterday on Fogart TV. I think uh, Aidan says that he's hoping to be back for Stennis Muir. So um, I don't envisage uh, Nesbitt coming back in for next week, but I think Callum and uh, uh, Michael McKenna, it was great to have them back in the squad yesterday, but I, I just don't see them starting a game until there's a, a, a need for them to do so. Uh, yeah. do, do you think of uh, Lewis, maybe Gary Oliver might miss out to maybe McKenna, or do you think he like Laura Ross, he'll, he'll stick with the same starting eleven? Yeah, I think I think um, I think you can see with McGlynn, he, he, he likes to keep a, a winning team in place, keep that continuity. Yeah. I, I would like to see McKenna get a bit more of a run out because no one's really seen what he can do with us. You know, he, he was obviously a, a hero up at our growth. Um, and he looks he looks apart certainly when he comes on. So, you know, I think he's just got to bide his time and, and then when he gets in takes takes his chance. Like similar to, to Ethan Ross did. Yeah. An our player that I thought played started off really, really well. I think he, he fell out of the game a wee bit was Keelan Adams. Can we just talk about that bit of skill he did out on the <laughs> wing where he, he flicked it round and the boy was back heel? It was incredible. It was so so sexy, wasn't it? It was blown. <laughs> Oh, it really was. Unbelievable. That boy is going to make us a lot of money, by the way. Um, Do you know, I, I was thinking about, obviously, the start he's had with us is, is incredible. Um, you know, um, for someone to have that impact, mm -hmm. not playing a, a, a professional level at all before, I mean, who, who's the last person that you can think of at Falkirk who's had that sort of impact? I'd I would say, you know, it, I liken it a wee bit to, remember when Andy Laurie had that, before the John Potter injury, he just flew yeah. out the traps. I think, yeah. you know, it's obvious, I think it's just because it's a similar, obviously he's playing right back as well, in that Laurie position, going back to the Ian McCall season. Um, yeah. But he seems to just grasp this game and just, he's making it look easy, you know what I mean? It's, it's And plus, I think when you look at his physicality, and what he offers on, on that side of things as well, I think there's going to be a cure clubs looking at this boy, especially, you know, when you start seeing the numbers like three assists in three games, Ross. Yeah, no, I, I agree with Lewis as well. I think um, you're probably going back to, like, in terms of the backstory, you're probably going back to, like, the 90s with Davey Weir, who hadn't mm -hmm. kicked That's another great comparison yeah, as well. He hadn't kicked a ball professionally, had played yeah. sort of college football out in, in the US, Um got a random trial at Brockville because he, he lived locally and yeah. uh, I, I remember his debut I, I remember I was sitting in the wing stand at Brockville and it was against Dundee United and um, you don't get there's pre-internet days so you, you only hear a name you don't hear anything else and he absolutely man-marked uh, uh, big Duncan Ferguson at the game Ferguson, yeah. um, so for me there's, there's a comparison there but what a start yeah. Um, from him, I honestly it would be a Jim McKay, a Jim McLean special, like I mentioned last week. <laughs> seven year deal, seven year option, get it in front of the boy, and then when we sell him for five million pounds, it's the Keelan Adams East Stand that eventually gets built as well. One hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
we settled into the game, uh, and then Ben Stanway obviously had an absolute nightmare. Um, <laughs> bo- booking right in front of the ref, it was a foul, it was a yellow card, and then that dive. Um, I did hear Chris Doolan, an interview with Chris Doolan, basically saying, you know, he, sh- he, he knew it was a dive, but he shouldn't have been booked. I was like, that's not how the rules work, Chris. If yeah. you dive, it's a booking. You know, simulation is a booking. Yeah. Um, and but he was trying to say it shouldn't have been. I mean, the, the referee was a bit card happy, and yeah. he thought it's going to be one of these referees. But he got that decision spot on, didn't he, Lewis? Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Certain, certainly, the second booking, I would say, was a, a a definite a definite booking. I think he was maybe a little bit unlucky with his first one, but I think the way that it happened, the referees turned round and it looks like um, uh, Sean Mackey's been poleaxed, but <laughs> I don't think he touched him that much. But yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, he looked absolutely mortified when he was coming off. He walked right in front of him. He looked so embarrassed because he knew he would, he just made an absolute tit of himself. Oh, big time. Absolutely. Couldn't couldn't hide his face more. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um even though if, if, when it was no no and we were, we were it was ten against eleven, got to say big save he didn't really have much to do in the match Nicky but that was a big save um, from Rico Diak that he had yeah. Ross I mean because if that goes in and you're up against yeah. 10 it's tough yeah exactly and we know what they would have done they would have um, defended a 1-0 lead with their, with their lives um, I mean, that's uh, what they, they, were, they were defending you know that enemy weren't they, they, were, they were, it was like they, they were looking they, they basically parked the bus and then were looking at hitters on the break that, that's it and um, the amount of chances we had in the first half I, I know Lewis mentioned I think it was 21 overall I, I don't know what the split was first half versus second half but because second half we probably had, probably had more but in that first half we could have easily went in a couple of goals to the good and we only didn't because of the their keeper had some good saves uh, obviously we were unlucky with, with Sean Mackey uh, hitting the bar uh, as well but that would have been an absolute belter wouldn't it our defenders were unbelievable <laughs> yesterday <laughs> obviously Sean Mackey Smashing the bar. If, if that had went in, <laughs> my God, scenes, absolute scenes. Sean Mackey is going to score an absolute world at some point. Remember the bicycle kick he tried to hit against Al at the end of the season, mm. and that one yesterday. <laughs> um, but it, it, yeah, it, it's going to happen for Sean. I mean, there was there was a big chance when it went to ten men. Even before it went to ten men, we had chances. I thought the it was a, a poor decision from Brad Spencer. Um, he had a good few chances yesterday, but he, from that tight angle. Ran smashing it low and hard and hoping it just went in the back of the net. He tried to stick it in the top left corner, mm-hmm. and I'm like, "What are you doing, Brad?" Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you could just you just felt Ross when it was nil nil and we're at ten minutes. You just felt a goal was coming. It, yeah, you did. It was going to be a matter of when and how many were we going to score, um, and it, it did feel like that. I think for the like we were chatting at half time in our group where we were like, "Listen, it's coming, it's coming." We just don't know who's going to get it. And what was weird, I know, I think we were all saying, right, how are we going to get a goal here? And then obviously in the second half, big Liam, uh, big Pirlo just steps up and <laughs> absolutely destroys it in the back of the net. Uh, it was one of those shots that it was still rising when it hit the net. It's uh, It was incredible at live, but then watching the replays and then I think there's there's a video from behind the goals as well. Oh, that video's <laughs> class in it from behind the goals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. We needed something like that to break them down uh, because they were defending with all, all they had. So, yeah, yeah it was good. Um, I, I was, just before the goal, I mean, you, you saw our whole defence, our back four, were playing it from 25 yards out from their goal. <laughs> like, they don't, because you saw the goal, it's calling Liam basically knocking it about to each other before Liam just goes, right, I've had enough of this, it just rattles one. But it was, it was going to take something like that. And, like, like I, I was speaking to Fraser, who sat beside saying, just before Liam scored, I was like, our back four is at 25 yards, right? It was the <laughs> highest line I've ever seen in my life. And then, obviously, what a, what a goal from. Big Liam. I messaged his dad, dad Willie, and just I said, "Is that the best he's best goal he's ever scored in his career?" And he said, oh, it's, "It's close." So I wonder <laughs> if he's scored better than that. But it was unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. And like you say, Lewis, we needed something like that, a moment like that, because this all defended very well in fairness, and their goalkeeper was played had a really really good game as yeah. well. Um, we should have been two up as well right after it as well, Ross. That uh, chance from Gary Oliver. It was a great bit of play, some 
some yeah. really nice passes back and forth. And Gary, I think, will look back at that and say that's one he should be scoring. He, he, he probably will, um, and he didn't miss by much. Um, it's one of those strikes that I could have easily hit the bar and went in as well. Um, but yeah, we, we had a, we had a few of them in the second half, didn't we? We were just yeah. we just hit it too hard and too high. Yeah, it was yeah. It, it, Spencer had one similar as well, um, where he, he, I think he just blazed it over rather than a bit of composure. Um, but you know, it, it, we we made the we made the change, made the triple change. I was very surprised that Dylan Tate stayed on the park. I didn't think he had a great game yesterday. What did you think, Lewis? Yeah, I, I think. Um, I mean, you could see what he was certainly trying to do, but he, he you know, he, I think he got himself maybe caught out a couple of times. Um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a, a, um, a performance, I guess, that we we've come to expect from him. But I'm, I'm sure it's just a, a blip. Um, I mean, uh, obviously, we'll come to their goal, but I think he, he certainly could have done a bit better with that one. Um, I've been picking picking up a book in for, for that challenge, and you've not even touched the man. It's not great. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, the worry for me at one now, and it, it did pan out like we said, was we were bit woeful with some of our passing and there was a lot of misplaced pass and you just think one misplaced pass or one just lapse of concentration and they're going to get in and mm -hmm. that's what happened yeah. um, it was poor control from Keelan Adams they get in you, you talked about Dylan Tate's <laughs> non-challenge yellow <laughs> card um, and you know the fair play they, they played round. I thought um, the boy Turner and Fitzpatrick were, were actually half decent in midfield for them yesterday they combined well Boy, that boy that came off had pace and just got in behind, and you know, Nicky had didn't have a chance one on one. You know, yeah, he, no, he, he didn't have a. Oh, sorry, on you go. No, 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 on you go. I was just going to say, I thought he did. Nicky didn't have much of a chance there. I actually thought that the subs from both teams were were well timed for for both teams because obviously just before they scored, we had um, uh, Morrison came on, Alfie came on, uh, McKenna came on, and it, and it felt the right subs based on who were taking off. Because I also thought that's going to give us a bit of a, a fresh impetus to see what they can do, and we, we know how much Alfie got in the ball yeah, as well. Yeah, Alfie did really well when he came off the bench. Oh, he was brilliant. He was he was brilliant. But on the on the flip side, their subs and formation change help them get yeah. that goal as well. Because as you said, John, earlier, they were camped in their own half for most of the second half and the first half. And it was only really when they, they actually had a bit of an out ball. Um, because that boy's fast. Uh, the, the the boy, Terry, is it a bladdy? Is that a blade? A bladdy, a bladdy. Um, and they only signed him the night before. So obviously we wouldn't have known much about him <laughs> anyway. But he was very, very fast. And I just think it gave both teams, the substitutions gave both teams that little bit of a an impetus. But even after they scored, I still, I was confident we were going to get a, a second goal. Yeah, we, I mean, we certainly went straight back up the park and, and tried to create chances. I mean, uh, you know, it, it, it seemed to be raining down on on their goals. I think, was it called, called Donalds and had a had a, another ping from distance. Which, oh my God, uh, I, thought that one was, I thought that one was in. I, yeah. know, the, I think the keeper got a touch on to, to the post. Yeah. I, I mean, keeper, uh, their keeper had a very good game. It was a, is it Roberts? I think they've maybe got him on loan. Roberts, yeah. Uh, he, was, he was excellent. Yeah. Uh, but... It, it it didn't even from the camera angle it doesn't look clear if the keepers touched onto the post or what's happened, but yeah. it, it did look like a matter of time before we were going to get in again. I mean, it's like it's going back to the centre. The defence yesterday, Sean Mackey hitting the bar, Cole hitting the post, <laughs> Lendo's worldy. But when it went one one again, I just turned to, to the, the guy said, "It's going to come. It's, mm. it's absolutely going to come," and it did. Uh, you know, Keelan Adams. Three and three with the assists mm -hmm. again, charging down that right hand side. G great ball, brilliant ball. And I heard Brad Spencer's interview after the match because he, he had that a very similar chance and he yeah. scored it. But on the half, old oh, no buddy or Holly, mate. Oh, just technique, laces <laughs> through it. Oh, keepers, no chance with that. It was, it was delightful. Yeah, I think certainly with Spencer, he. he, he, he sort of controls things in the middle of the park. Him and Tate are, are obviously brilliant. I heard you guys speaking about them as well as a combination. They are excellent. They, they complement each other so well. Yeah, they interchange so well. Like, one will, like, drop in uh, to get the ball from defence while the other pushes on. And they, it's like they, they, they're, they're quarterbacks for me, like, they, that position they play when they come and get the ball from defence and the absolute quarterback can dictate the game and how how we want to play. You know, they... they 
look for the switches. They look. For, they're always looking forward though, which is great because in when you get players that play in that kind of pivot role, you know, mm. there's a lot of backwards, backwards, sideways, sideways. But Spencer and Tate get on the ball and they make things happen. Yeah, that, that that's it, and I think that that's maybe the the, the good thing is where if one isn't maybe on form, the other one is usually there to sort of raise the game and or or you know pick up on the other one. So I think it I think it's really it, it was really um, I think they were uh, his performance was important, uh, Spencer for making that that difference, and and obviously he got the winner as well. Oh, it was, it was delightful, Ross. Um... We deserve to win that match. If we had, if we had drawn that, it would have been a bit of a, a dance uh, score, way. Yeah, it would have been. It would have been an absolute travesty had we not won that. Um, it was, as I say, it was two going on twelve. Um, if you th- as we as we've already spoken about, like Mackey hitting the bar, Donaldson hitting the post, where loads of shots saved, where two or three going over the bar. It was just to finish him. That was the difference, uh, and and some good goalkeeping. Um, but it really was in the scenes. Uh, when that went in, like it's, I know, like everybody talks about the ultras and the the Kevin McAllister stand, and it went absolutely bananas, right? But yeah. for this, for the second time in a, in a, in seven days, like the main stand just 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 went absolutely bonkers as well, and it's I'm absolutely loving it. Yeah. I am absolutely loving it. And love how good was it seeing some of the pictures of the main stand yesterday as well? There was literally just a few hundred empty seats in the very, very last section. Um, the rest of the stand was full. And uh, yeah, long, long may it continue. I mean, yeah. 6,500 supporters turned up for, for the game. When you look at the, the, the actual Celtics and Mirren game, 6,900 at that day. <laughs> There you That's go. phenomenal. And hats off to Partick Thistle, by the way, as well. They yeah. brought a really good support. I have to say, slight on the club, there was a lot of angry Thistle supporters because they only had two turnstiles open in, in a stout stand. That, that's not a great look because no. it's a, a Falkirk no. supporter going to a away game and you only have two turnstiles open. Well, we, we would moan about it and we yeah. would do. And we have done because it's <laughs> happened to us as well, isn't it? But yeah. I saw... Um, I saw Jamie Swinney had re- uh, replied to a Thistle fan last night on Twitter and what the club had said, and I'll, I'll come back on this one in a second, but what the club had said was that in the pre-match um, operations meeting, uh, Thistle had intimated that it would be about eight, sorry, 800 people would be there, right? So that's why the club did what they did. They had two turnstiles open, which is roughly 900 to 1,000 people can use them, right? Mm-hmm. My argument to that would be, um, we should be there. Should, we should be agile enough to realise that there's a big fucking queue of people coming out the stadium, and they're not going to make kick off, right? Why can't we just? And this is not a slight on any of the, but any people that do the jobs that I'm about to mention. But we have so much wasted stewards pre-match in the car park. Move two or three of them to the away end and get the other turnstiles open. I don't understand why that's such a big problem. I get it with the catering. They probably wouldn't be able to open up catering last minute, but you can must be able to open up the turnstiles a, a bit quicker. Yeah. That would be my that would be I, my I think there'll be a learn there from the club. To I'm sure there will. There'll, I'm sure there'll there be will. a learn there from the club and I'm sure hopefully going forward that, that gets sorted. I mean this will be one of the biggest away supports that will come to the stadium this season as well. So there's that yeah. to account for as well. Um, but yeah, two one worthy winners. Absolutely brilliant crowd, like you say, six thousand five hundred in there, unbelievable. And yeah, just an all round good day at the office. You know, we played, what we did what we did against the ten men. Um, could have went another way, uh, but just the, the, this team was. We say the navy blue juggernaut just ro- keeps on rolling, man. Forty one games, not out, unbelievable stuff. Um, let's hear what John McGlynn had to say after the match. John, third league game, third win. Um, I think it's safe to say that this has been a, an incredible start to the league. Yeah, we've got to be happy. Absolutely, uh, difficult game today. Uh, I know on the face of it, you know, Partick's been due to ten men after twenty-five minutes, and so, you know, I think if you know at the game, you're probably thinking, uh, you know, you know, Falkirk are going win easy, you know, but it didn't help us actually. You know, Partick going down to ten men, and again, I know that's the kind of statement that would be questioned, but it just meant that Partick went back in, sat like really, really deep, no an awful lot of space to play through them, uh, and so. We had to be patient. We did create opportunities, didn't take them. And of course, anything can happen in these these moments. I've been involved in teams that have won with 10 men. I've been involved in games where, you know, you've uh, 
I played against 10 men and got beat. You know, it's, there's no guarantee. Uh, as long as the game's at nil nil, then anything could happen. I think we're on top. You know, the majority, even we are 11 v 11. A little bit nervy start, but I thought once we got over that, you know, we, we created some good opportunities. Uh, Ethan Ross had a great run in the first half, came through. Calvis had a two, three good shots. I mean, like we saw Mackey hit the bar. We had good opportunities, uh, didn't quite take them. But then, second half, it's a great strike by uh, Liam Henderson. What a season he's having so far. He's been outstanding going back into left centre back. And, uh, you know, it's very similar in the way that uh, last year against Annan, when Cole drove up for the, the back and hit his shot and scored against Annan, it was a similar, it was like a, probably, so Cole on the like me saying this, but I think Liam's was even better today. Uh, but we spoke about this type of thing. Our outside centre backs could drive forward the ball today. And if the midfield can kind have of moved a little bit, maybe there'd be passes on, or maybe we could get a strike from distance. And of course, that's what's happened. And with so many bodies in front of a goalkeeper, you know, maybe no see it till late. So it was a great strike. And of course, the way we are, we'll, we'll try to go and get a second goal and Gary probably should make it make it 2-0 right after the goal. We've done well to win the ball back. We've done well to break. And he's got a great opportunity to keep the ball down and score. And likewise, I think Brad's had an opportunity as well. Cole's had a great strike. The goal he's made a brilliant save from. So I think that the opportunities were there, but you don't take them. It comes back to bite you when uh, Partick equalise. But great credit once again to our, to our players for their response and uh, getting the second goal. Uh, again, it was a really, really good goal. Well worked in the right-hand side. Ball come in and Brad couldn't hit it any, any sweeter. Uh, a goal worthy win in any game. So I think over the piece, I think we deserved it. Certainly, Partick made it difficult for us. They hung in there and uh, they just about got a draw out of it. Uh, and it shows, again, this league is not going to be easy by any stretch of imagination. We're delighted to have nine points out of three games. Uh, we're delighted, obviously, to be in the quarterfinals of the League Cup. And obviously, because of that, we're very happy. But it's just a start and a hell of a long way to go. We don't want to get carried away. But, the, you know, the team has just carried on for where they were last year. So there's a lot of confidence there. There's a lot of uh, belief in the dressing room. We'll we, we go down to Capelo next week and it, uh, uh, we understand that'll be a difficult game, absolutely. Uh, so we look forward to that, but for, for now, just going to enjoy the weekend. A massive thank you to the fans today, you know, to have six and a half thousand in here. Uh, big thank you as well for the 1100 uh, Partick fans that have come along as well, made it a great, a great atmosphere. Uh, but our fans, magnificent, absolutely different class. Uh, with the backing that we've been getting from you, I know you're enjoying what you're watching or you wouldn't be so uh, making such a noise. I mean, the whole stadium was rocking today, the whole stadium, you know. So a massive thank you to you guys. Uh, you're creating a great atmosphere and uh, the players responded when, when we needed you. Happy John, happy John, as ever. Um, yeah. Um, Interestingly enough, I heard an interview with John, um, which was done for the radio, saying that he doesn't expect any movement in the transfer window this week, which is interesting. His kind of thing was, I'm not going to bring just bring in a body to sit on the bench. Yeah. If they're coming in, they need to start. And as we said, that's starting 11. And the guys we've talked about that are sitting on the bench, when you sit, look at the bench yesterday and you see Cal Morrison, you've got Alfie on there, Finn Yates, Leon McCann. You know, it's a fair point. Yeah, no, it's, it's a fair point. I still think I still would like a stronger striker. I still like. We didn't talk about Ryan Chanley. Ryan Chanley had that that chance, and it was just a really heavy touch from. Um, mm. you, you know, I still think we could do with another striker. You know, Jordan moving on to to Owen and Clyde. I still think we just need another a, a better option from the bench when it comes to striking. I thought Ross had a quiet game yesterday. Um. Um, do you know he 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 was marshalled really well, and they changed the formation. So Partick apparently normally only play with the, the the four at the back, but they were obviously playing with a back five prior to the the sending off yesterday. So they obviously knew of the the dangers, and not just Ross, but obviously him playing the other two in, two in as well. But yeah, he probably a bit quieter than than he had been. Um, in terms of the money. Um, I'm, I think the first thing we'll see is, is players who are maybe not got as long left on their deal um, getting an extension. So your Calvin Millers, maybe Alfie uh, as well. Yeah. So I think these guys will, will get a, 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 a hopefully an extension um, sooner rather than later. Anybody on your wish list that you'd like to see come in, Lewis? You know, it's difficult. I, I, um, I, I totally get where McGlynn's coming from. 
like there's no point in bringing someone in to sit on the bench. Yeah. It's really hard to displace a, a, someone in a winning team as well. Um, I do think if we are going to go for the tight, like if we're going to go for a title push or or the playoffs, we will eventually need a couple of players um, just to bolster it because you're going to get suspensions, you are going to get injuries, you know, unless you get a, a freak season where it all goes to plan. But um, yeah, I mean, we've we've obviously got um, Tom Lang to come back as well. Um, who who would bolster the defence? I'm I'm with you, John. I, I do think we we do need another striker, and it's nothing against Shanley. I think you just need someone else there to mix it up a little bit. You know, you've got a great option in in Ross McKeever there, but I, I think you need a different option, like a, a proper poacher, maybe just something something to to change the game. Uh, you know, you've got the two wide men, and a pro- a proper poacher just gets in there and. And does the business. I think a poacher would work though. I actually think we just need another Ross McKeever, if that makes <laughs> sense. I know it's hard to do, but I don't know. Like it's like so Jordan Allen's a poacher, is he? And if I think if that type of player was going to work, it would have. Um but but then, but then how how much of a chance does Jordan Allen had as well? Because we've done so well. <laughs> so. Listen, he's got two feet. <laughs> he, he, he trains every day the same as everybody else and I'm not having a go at him but there's obviously a reason why he's not got a game and I just think <laughs> for me if if Ross was to be injured for a mm-hmm. for a period granted there is people there you've got Gary Oliver you've got Aggieman you've got Shanley but none I, of them really do what McKeever does that, that's true I, do you know what I, I think Alfie's a really interesting one I think it'd be really interesting to put him in the nine position I think yeah. he, I think he would get some change out of that. By the way, so maybe maybe that's in the Glenn's mind as well. That Could if be. The worst comes to worst, I could always got social put Alfie into the nine because I think getting him behind. I mean, I don't think in terms of what Ross does, you know, bringing people into play, that wouldn't be his game. But getting him behind people, you know, and carrying the ball, you know, that's what Alfie does. And so maybe he's got that in mind. But I I would like to see some movement in that area, and I do think that. Center half, if in, a, in an ideal world, maybe a young uh, center half on loan from one of the bigger clubs. I just think for the cover, because if either Hendo or Donaldson gets injured this this stage, it's a case of having to shuffle the pack across. Whether that's Adams yeah. coming in and you lose that on the right, and then you obviously bring Finn back into the team, or Sean coming over in it from the left and bringing Leon back in as well. Both, by the way. <laughs> brilliant options to have but yeah. when big sackies the way big Sean's playing at the moment it's just you don't Leon must be kicking himself in the, but you can't display Sean Mackey the way he's playing no. just now as, I mean we've seen what Keelan's doing on the right hand side as well so I mean Finn and Leon you know they're very unlucky but as you we said that John's not going to change that that team um, as long as they're winning um, yeah. but yeah I, I, I do think you know an option at centre half would be in an ideal world, and also having that uh, centre forward option as well. But we'll wait and see what happens. I did notice, however, Ross, your favourite player might be going back out and loan from St Johnston. We Max. We Max, the new Russell. Yeah, I saw that. I saw <laughs> someone saying that on Pine Boreville, I think it was. Um, it would, I don't think he, I, I genuinely don't think he would get a, a, a starting berth over Spencer or Tate, though. But just now. Be a good wee option to have on. Oh, it'd be brilliant to have. <laughs> We Max yeah, back brilliant. and like bring, yeah. bringing Wee Max off the vet. Oh, I'd love having Wee Max back. Yeah. <laughs> bring back no, Wee Max it. just for bands. <laughs> it would be good, but <laughs> it'd be good. I don't um, know if I'd use the wage on him just now. No. <laughs> right. Okay. <then. laughs> right. Let's get see what you're saying to the game. Sam kicks us off by saying, "Not our best performance, but shows how much character there is." to churn out another result against 10 defenders. Brad Spencer was the spark that ignited that one yesterday. He was everywhere. Another win for Momentum FC. Love it. Uh, Callum says, I didn't know Tom Daly played for Partick, but what a performance today. Uh, In my opinion, today was our toughest test, despite Partick not being that great as well. And uh, the finished their comment was saying, boing, boing. Was that the the, the Thistle? That Partick Thistle chant to go, boing, boing, Partick Yeah, I never heard that at all yesterday. I never heard that, it's absolutely embarrassing. Um, (laughs) Craig thoroughly deserved the win again. We had plenty of chances despite this one packing out their defence and looking for a point from the start. The keeper had a world day, but unfortunately for him, the Navy Blue juggernaut rolls on. We're more than capable of making the top four. Brilliant. Elsa, 
uh, friend of the podcast. So dominant performance and should have had a couple more before Partick equalised. Tate and Spencer set the tone and I thought the boys at the back were immense. So hard to name a player of the match. Hendo uh, squeaks it, but Adams gets a special mention. What a time to be a Bairn. Uh, Lewis, uh, apart from being scalped in the face with the ball, <laughs> poor Lewis, a very satisfying performance. Brad Spencer on fire is a belter. Oh dear, that does sound a sore one. Uh, Paul <laughs> says, wonderful again from everyone. Great to see Ethan Ross getting another start. Thought it was excellent first half. Don't think I've seen Brad Spencer have a bad game yet. The guy is a machine. Hendo, what more to say? Just class. I know, absolutely. Alan, obviously undershouted, but Hogarth had one actual save to make, and he made it. Many wouldn't have. Beginning to be concerned that his form might attract clubs with cash to spend. Wow, that's interesting. I yeah, think, yeah. I, I think a lot of teams will be starting to wake up to what Falkirk are doing, and we'll be looking at, I mean, Spencer, Tate, these boys that have... Mm. You know, there will be clubs starting to have to go. Oh, what, what's happening at Falkirk? So it, it is interesting to see what. I think we'll be. I think we'll be fine this week. But come January, yeah, you might have some people sniffing about in January. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, J- uh, John says passing nowhere near the level of the Hearts game, but the fight in the team is incredible. Need to stop the floating crosses from twenty five <laughs> yards out. Adam showed how to do it uh, by getting to the byline. Three assists in three games. Hendo was different class, indispensable for us. Yeah, I thought the crossing was poor yesterday. I have to say, I thought some of our crosses, like they were just missing the mark by miles yesterday. And it was it only takes like Adams to get to that byline, like you say, smash it across. Cause havoc. What he's yeah, he's very good at doing that, as we've seen in the three goals he's created. Uh, Indira Ross um, on Twitter says, "Got to." Make the territory and possession count. Really need to go in a goal or two up at half time. Better teams will punish us. McGuinn needs to work out how to break down that bus when it's parked. Apart from a few long range effort, we struggled, but good effort to get the win. I don't think we struggled, but I, I get what you say. I get what you're saying about the you know the miss passes. Um, we, sh- we struggled to put the ball in the net, but um, I mean, yeah. we, we created loads and loads of chances. The worry, the worry I guess, is that. We're creating all these chances, and one game is going to come back to bite us when we, we're not taking them. You know. Yeah, that, that's that's a sort of pessimistic <laughs> view. I usually take in games that it's eventually going to going to hurt us at some point, and yeah. and that that was where I was coming from. As much as we were in control in that game, but yeah. Mm. Uh, and finishing off with Ada's dad so yeah another display of composure class and confidence from the squad today looks like it's going to be Falkirk and Air to beat this season all the success makes me feel like a tool for being mad at McGlynn after the Airdrie disaster all is forgiven there you go trust the process eh? trust the process right That's okay cool. then um, thanks for your correspondence uh, Falkirk daft rated player from yesterday Ross Wayne um, for his overall contribution and for his strike, I'm going to say Liam Henderson. I thought the goal could be goal of the season um, and he was just all over the park. The same could exactly be said for Brad Spencer, to be fair, but um, I'm going to go with Big Hendo. Hendo pips it for you. Lewis? Yeah, um, for for his overall contribution and for his strike, I'm going to go for Brad Spencer. Oh, so I've got the cast and vote here. Oh. Yeah. You're going to go wild card and say Alfie or something, aren't no, you? No, 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 no. It's one of those two. It's one of it, those it, two. It, it would have... It would have been sort of between Adams and, and Spencer for me, but Adams, Adams sort of contributed to the uh, party goal. But, you know, the, it's, they're just incredible, that, that you know, Spencer and, and Adams. Yeah. Oh, no pressure. Right. Who are you going for? I have to say, I love Hendo. It's just, for me, I hit a centre half, scoring a goal like that, and the composure, I've got to go for Hendo, even though we got a really good song at Brad Spencer yesterday. I know. Um, but yeah, I just think, I, I, I mean, it's, a, it's oh God, it's, it's so tight, but I just think a centre half scoring a goal like that, you've got to, got to go it. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to give it to Hendo. To be fair, that that uh, Brad Spencer song is brilliant. Uh, oh, uh, fantastic, wasn't it? You've you've got you've got to say the ultras do play a big part in in rallying the team as well. See when when Partick scored, they 
picked it up mm. by the time and it made the difference. And, it was a well, weird it's, moment it's when, both, when both sets of supporters were singing the same song. That <laughs> yeah, I noticed that as well. <laughs> it was, they were, I don't know if they were I think they were maybe singing about Kyle Turner and then we were singing about Brad Spencer it was a bit of a strange <laughs> moment but um, I know yeah, it was smashing but Liam Henderson gets the Falkirk Daft rated have we got a Falkirk Dafty however Ross Wayne um, not not that I can think of from a Falkirk persuasion but um, uh, the, the boy Stanway uh, for Thistle just that's one of the most laughable uh, dives I've ever seen so for me he's a massive daft day of the weekend right yeah. Lewis he, he he definitely does get the, the daft day of the weekend but um, like that Dylan Tate's my, my favourite player, uh, player in the team by a long way but um, I would give him Falkirk daft day because he should have absolutely nailed that guy and, and got a deserved booking <laughs> 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 yeah, but, I, yeah, I I think for a fault I'd go with Dylan Tate as well for that um reason as well. And I think he had I think Dylan will look at his performance yesterday and didn't have a brilliant game. He had his mo- he had moments, he had moments, but I think just the standard that we've seen Dylan from the start of the season and the, the you know last season as well. Um yeah, I, I think Dylan Tate for me, but ben, we'll give it to Ben Stanway. We'll give it to Ben <laughs> Stanway. So there we go. Yeah. Brilliant. Um fantastic. Uh right now. We're going to debut a new bit of the podcast. This is very exciting. We thought this would be the perfect moment to to debut this with a fellow Falkirk podcaster on, and we're going to do Falkirk Daft versus. <laughs> right. So basically, Ross has put together a series of questions. We're going to take it in turns each week to answer the questions, and we'll take it as a quiz host. Five questions about the Bairns are kind of penalty shootout style. We'll go against each other. It's Falkirk Daft versus the listeners. Um, and this is basically, Ross, you've got five questions there in front of you, is that right? I, I do, yes. So the first thing I need for you two to do is make sure your phones are face down or right, away from you. okay, yeah. Because not that you're going to have a massive amount of time for giggling, right? But <laughs> um, this is how we're going to do it. So um, how we're going to do this, we've got five questions, a bit of a penalty shootout, okay? Um, now, uh, John, are you quite happy for us to kind of go one one on one, or he's wanting to do answer the same question each, or what are you thinking? Uh, what, uh, um, wait, let's answer the same question. Let's Fab- the fabulous, question. fabulous, excellent. So, um, you're not going to have too long to think about this one, all right? Uh, you'll have about 10 15 seconds each question, but uh, head to head, here we go. So, question number one How many seasons were Beezer Homes the main shirt sponsor of Falkirk Football Club? I am going to go for five. Lewis, I'll go four. Both incorrect on this first one. The answer was six. Yeah, it was six. So we had from 1990 to 1991 was the first season and it ran until the end of 1996, 95, 96. Um, with uh, a relegation, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so no points. We are on uh, zero zero so far. So, question <laughs> number two, Lewis, I'll be coming to you first. Uh, Falkirk broke the world transfer record in 1922. However, did it happen in the January, the February, or the March of that yeah. season? Oh, what the hell, Ross? <laughs> oh, good. Sorry, guys. February. You're going to go February. Okay. Mr. McAnally, what are you thinking? January, February, or March? I'll go March. March. The correct answer was February the 7th. Damn it! <laughs> Mr. Hogan takes the lead in the penalty shootout. So, John, we're going to come back to you for the, the first answer here. So, in his first spell at Falkirk, which manager signed Liam Henderson? So, in his first spell... At Falkirk, which manager signed Liam Henderson was it Gary Holt, Peter Houston, or was it Paul Hartley? Right, I think this might be. I think it might be. I'm going to go Husty. You're going Husty, Lewis? Yeah, I'm sure it's Peter Houston. It was Mr. Peter Houston, indeed. So it's 2 1 to Lewis just now. <laughs> Uh, question number four, we're going to come back to you, Lewis, as well. So Falkirk are now 41 games unbeaten in the league. Yep. But who did we defeat in match number one of that run? Question to 
de bon salut. Good night. So Falkirk are now 41 games unbeaten in the league. But who did we defeat in match number one? I think I know this one. Oh, man. You think you know it? Oh, I, said, oh, I love it. You're putting a bit of pressure on it. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a wild guess. <laughs> right. On you uh, go. I'll go Aloha. Aloha, John? What are you thinking? That's what I thought it was. Aloha. Was it, it was Aloha. <laughs> and we won 4 1. Yeah. There we go. So what's the four. score? 3 2? Yeah. 3 2. Now, last question then. So, will this be a tie or will Lewis take the first uh, win of the season for Poker Daft versus? So, last question. The week after that Aloha game, uh, Falkirk faced Inverness Cali Thistle in the semi final at Hamden. Of the current squad, how many started that match? So I'll oh, give you oh. a wee bit extra. It's a tough one. I'll give you a wee bit extra time to think about this one. So the week after Falkirk, uh, the week after that game, Falkirk faced Inverness Cali Thistle in the semi final at Hamden. And of the current squad, how many started the match? Right. Da, 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 da. Uh, nah. Uh, uh, nah. Right. I've got an answer. No, obviously it's not a number here. I'm going to look for the names as well. So just not a pun. Oh, I don't really. Right. Right. I think. Oh, I, right. I think. I think. I think. I think, <laughs> I've got, I think I've got. I think I've got. Um. I think I've got it. Lewis. Yeah. Lewis, yeah. you got an answer too. Yeah, I think. Right. Okay. I think I've so. Got the Right, okay, John, we will come to your good self first. I'm going to say Cole Donaldson. Okay. Leon McCann. Mm -hmm. Liam Henderson. Mm -hmm. And Cal Morrison. Interesting. Okay, Lewis, we'll come to you. Uh, I was going to go Cole Donaldson, uh, Leon McCann, Cal Morrison and Aidan Nesbitt. So you're saying four as well, but a different four. Is that right? Four. Yeah. <laughs> so one of you has got this bang on the money. So you're both right with four. The four players were Cole Donaldson, Leon McCann, Liam Henderson, ah. and Callum <laughs> Morrison. Yes! So, Come on! Nesbitt, <laughs> so Nesbitt was on the bench. I was on the bench. Uh, on the bench. Uh, you also could have had uh, Gary Oliver was on the bench as well. Yeah. Um, and I think there may be one more. Uh, I did check this. Let me double check. I'm sure I've got it to hand. On the bench as well as uh, Gary Oliver. You had Finn Yates, Nesbitt um, and uh, Sean Mackey. I can't believe bench. Nesbitt didn't start that game, by the way. Yeah. Maybe. Um, I actually forgot some of these players were even on the bench. Like you've obviously got Matty Matty Wright uh, was on the was on the bench. PJ Morrison was the goalie. Uh, Craig McGuffey was on the bench, and uh, Paul Watson. There you go. Wow. <laughs> Under, <laughs> so um, that's three all. So tiebreaker time, and I have got one just in case. <laughs> okay, we're sticking with the Inverness semi final, guys. Oh, no. Okay. And now it's going to be, a, I assume no one knows the, the answer to this off the top of their head. So it'll be our closest wins, right? Um, what was the attendance at that semi-final? Whoever's closest will win the point and win the day. Okay? Oh. So have a think. It was, I'll give you a clue. It wasn't a sellout. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a big, uh, there's a big soul tire, Tifo. There was, yeah, the Inverness fans did a massive <laughs> tifo by the old, similar to the one Rangers fans did last weekend. <laughs> so, uh, just to remind yourselves, what was the attendance at the semi final, Falkirk versus Inverness? Lewis Hogan, I am going to come to you. I mean, it, it wasn't it wasn't big at all. Uh, I think this might be too high, but I'll go seven and a half thousand. Seven and a half thousand, okay. Right, Mr. Oh, McAnally. Oh. See, this is where the game falls down. We should have really written these down and held them up because I <laughs> I think it was higher than that. I would say it was maybe about 11,000. You're saying 11? I'll say 11,282. 11,282? Yeah. Okay, and 7,500. The correct answer was 
randomly, because I wouldn't I didn't think it was as high as this. Twelve thousand eight hundred and seventy two. <laughs> Twelve thousand. It's up. You're walking down Hope Street. <laughs> <laughs> so we have in our first head to head, Falkirk Daft have took the win today. But um, that was tight. <laughs> John was tight. Max on fire. the <laughs> park. <laughs> <laughs> so well done, John. Well done. Obviously, Sorry, I'm a terrible winner. <laughs> I know. It's a good yes, good. Well done. <laughs> yes. um, but yeah, that's the first in our head to head. So, John, we need, you'll... To change, I've, 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 we need to change the format of this, Ross, because that doesn't work. Because we could, ju- I could have easily have just, because I went higher and Lewis, we'll work this out. We should have, but yes. I'm taking the win anyway. I'm taking the win. <laughs> we might change the format, but I'm taking the win, Lewis. Brilliant. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much for coming on. Um, oh, thanks for having me. We appreciate it, uh, Lewis. When is Walking Down Hope Street? When are you hoping to have the next episode out? Um, so that'll be in September. It'll be the September the two, three, five, fifth. I I would expect it to be out. So yeah, and it should be it should be announced to it as this coming Thursday. Right, Fantastic. and it's a Scottish so, international. Scottish international defender. A lot of people will be now guessing who it is, and we will we'll kick ourselves. But uh, listen, well, <laughs> can I can I take a guess before he leaves? And obviously, he's he probably not going to tell us anyway. But I'm going to have a guess. Is it? I'm going to go Brian Irvin. That's a nice guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling you if you're right or wrong, though. <laughs> you'll, you'll find out on Thursday if you're right or wrong. <laughs> Lewis, thanks so much for coming on Folk Daft. If you want to be a guest pundit just like Lewis, pundit at folkdaft.co.uk or slide into our DMs on the socials. This is Falkirk Daft. With Behind the Wall, we're Navy Blue, are you? Every week at Falkirk Daft, we'll look ahead to our next game, and that is against Greenock Morton. How long has it been since we've been at Capel? Looking forward to that one. Uh, and we thought we'd get on a celebrity supporter of Morton. He doesn't even know much about football. He, however, he does know a lot about dance music, the king of breakfast radio, the master of the GBX, Mr. George Berry. Welcome to Falkirk Daft. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. All your dreams, guys. Come, all your dreams come true, George. You're on my show now. I met some some listeners of yours on a train. I was doing a gig up in Aberdeen. I was coming back down, and some boys got on the train. I'd had a wee drink. I thought it must be four cut daft viewers, uh, and they, they sat down next to me, and I, they were talking about four cut and stuff and how well they're doing. And they, I said, "Oh, my mate does a podcast." He went, oh, is that John? I and I went, "I hey, it's good, but he's, he's a wee bit smashy and nicey." <laughs> I thought, yeah. Uh, so, Jesus. Okay, that coming from you, that is uh, there you go. the partridge himself is uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> indeed. Um George, thanks for coming on. Um we oh. I know you you don't know much you've not been in many torn games. Do you know, I I used to have a season ticket, right? Me and my mates used to go. See when Jim Duffy was a manager, we used to go right. all the time because I lived in Kobarkin then and it was twenty minutes down the road and it was great. But see now that I live in Glasgow, it's like you're like 45 minutes an hour to get there and then I'm working after it and it's just like and it's not it's no good at all you know you're getting down and you're we're screaming by with draws it's good I mean the, the, I think Morton are punching above their weight to be honest with you I think we've got a great manager there that I'm surprised we've held on to because I think if I was another club I'd be sniffing about him but let's hope that never happens uh, and he's done a great job and you know we're a kind of mid-table team I think consistently finished fifth the last couple of years we're six at the moment. I mean, you guys are flying because you're undefeated, but we've drawn our last three games. Get in. We've got a full card. We've got a whole season. We've technically gone a season as well. Granted, the season's only three weeks old, but, you know, <laughs> we've, we've got a whole season undefeated. Three, Invincible, Morton. Three, draw, three draws is not three bad. Draws, first, three points. First three points. Um, I mean, you obviously, Morton missed. George Oakley was the main man like last See, year. last year it was going great until George Oakley got injured. Aye. Uh, remember he got injured just it was it during the Motherwell game. I was at that game. Yeah. And, cut me, and we played Motherwell off the park. It was brilliant. And me and my mates went down. It's the first time we'd been in a couple of years that game. And uh, they were brilliant. And George Oakley ran the show and then he got injured and that was that. <laughs> And he's, he's carried on that form, obviously, at air, George. Uh, and, uh, but he's a he's a hard man to sort of replicate, isn't he? He's a good player, but you're not going to replace a guy like that. You know, I, I don't think Morton were ever going to hang on to him one day. He's, he's, he's just too good. Uh, and good luck to the guy, you know what I mean? But but we're doing well. I, like, um, 
one of the guys in the Super Scoreboard, I'm trying to think who it was, I think it was Roger Hanna, said that um, Dookie Emery's built a team in his own image. You know, that way, it's just a bunch of battlers that go out there and do it. And I thought that's probably the best analysis I've heard of a Morton side because that's what they like. You know what I mean? They just go out and they battle. And it's, it's, it's not great, but it's, they're, they're punching above their weight and they're doing well. So, yeah. oh, long way to continue. I mean, you did, you did lose, you know, get, like Robbie Muirhead going to, to Thistle, uh, sorry, Livingston as well. Robbie Crawford. Scored a lot of goals for us. And... Yeah, Robbie Crawford as well was on loose strap. Thank God he's gone. Imagine having to deal with that, that mental throwing that he had, Ross. Where he just basically from anywhere in the park he could throw it into the box. So thank That's God, lose straps there. But That's you it. have brought in the Jet, J. Emmanuel Thomas. The Aye, I mean, he's playing up front his own, isn't he? An absolute enigma of a player. Well, we'll wait and see what he does. He's not doing much yet, is he? We, we got lucky yesterday. It was a penalty yesterday, you know what I mean? But I mean, let me are a big side, you know what I mean? They've got to be one of the favourites to. Yeah. To win the league, you know what I mean? I, th- I think maybe Air will be the favourites, but you guys are up there as well, you know what I mean? The, the last time we played you was uh, in the, the League Cup and it was we, we won on penalties after we drew nil no. I have to say the worst memory of was when you came to our place and effectively relegated us. Uh, that was back, back in 2019. Um, obviously... Is that the Judas was, days? The Judas. Let's at Ray McKinnon. Now, Morton supporters, George, don't seem to like Falkirk supporters very much. I told you also... this. It's, it's all down to the Ray McKinnon thing, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> like I think we dodged a bullet with Ray McKinnon because, I mean, look what he did to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you maybe did, but it was it was. Uh, I mean, there seems to be that like, Morton bought up, built up this rivalry with Falkirk, so it's going to be really interesting for us to see what happens when we go down to Capel on Saturday. Yeah, I think so. Obviously, you going back to that last game. Uh, was it two summers ago, or was it last yeah. summer? Jonathan Johansson was in charge of Morton at the time. Was that yeah. right? No, it must have been two summers ago then. Yeah. And um, yeah, the Morton fans that were in the the cow shed, they were giving the Falkirk fans an awful lot of grief, and I'm sure they had like one of these homemade banners, you know, like on their mum's bed sheets and stuff. It's not about a snake. But, um, yeah, I, do you know the other memory I've got of Capolo was, it was the it was the Ray McKinnon um, season, I'm sure. And Ray McKinnon was obviously in the dugout for Falkirk. And it was the Morton, I think Morton scored. So the Morton board and all the people in hospitality from above the dugout were giving them absolute pelters. Oh, like, yeah. this is guys in suits. Giving them the Vickies and shouting at them and doing all this came out was surreal. Absolutely. It matter if you're in a suit, you're still going to get it's real. It's Judas, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think yeah. it was probably the greatest cover of a newspaper ever, the Greenock <laughs> Telegraph, when it just had Ray McKinnon's picture and the word Judas above it. And that was it. That was, there was no story there. It was just, that was just the front cover. Absolute oh, class. Was it was it not like um, some sick, like again a homemade sign above like a a, a flyover or uh, under? Oh, there was all that as well. Yeah, but I think people were getting t-shirts made with that, um, <laughs> you know, like that Freddie Star ate my hamster type. <laughs> <laughs> it's class. Amazing, amazing. I, I just like well, it'll be heated anyway. Um, I mean, looking looking back at the kind of run of fixtures, that nil nil in the cup. Uh, Morton obviously in that relegation game beating us. Morton have actually had the the best of it recently against Falkirk. Um, but you guys are undefeated. We are forty one games undefeated now, and we're scoring goals, which Morton are struggling to get by. As you said, George, you know, nil, two nil nil was a one one. Uh, a penalty was, yesterday, you know. For the penalty spot. <laughs> so I'll be interested to see what happens. Um, you know, this is the kind of game, Ross, that you just have that bad feeling that you see it on paper that is one of those ones that you might just slip up at. I don't know mm-hmm. why, but I I'm, I said that against, about Thistle yesterday and we got past that game all right. But, we did. Um, we, we did get past it yesterday, but I think I'm, I'm a bit like you. Our recent record over Morton's not been not been brilliant. Um, however, it is a different Falkirk team. It's a different mentality. The the, the atmosphere within the club and the fan base is, uh, is turned on its head from... Yeah. 2019. So I think there'll be a. I think there'll be a. I know it's a busy month with five away games on the spin, but I think there'll be a big Falkirk crowd throughout Greenock. Uh, I'm sure it'll be raining because it always seems to rain when our fans Falkirk mm-hmm. play at Greenock. <laughs> um, yeah, it'll be a big crowd though. I'm sure. Big crowd. What do you think the score's going to be, Ross Wayne? Um, 
I think it'll be 2 0 Falkirk, but I think we'll make, I don't think it'll be an easy 2 0. I think we'll be made to work for it. I really do. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm, I'm going to go for the, the treble. But George, what are you thinking? I'm going to draw again. I think we're the kings of the draws right now. Home advantage. We've got to be able to get something out of it. I, I reckon we'll go a 1 1. Go 1 1. Well, I'm hoping that I do the, the breakfast show treble because. A couple of weeks ago, it was you and Cameron on Greatest Hits Radio that I worked with. Yesterday, it was Partick Thistle, it was Cat Harvey that got it. it. So next Monday, when I walk into work, I'm hoping that will be, be giving it. That'll be George Bowie. I'll be getting the Vicky's thrown to him. Um, well, you, I think well, everyone wants to break your run. Everyone wants to break, don't you? It'd be, it'd be good to be the team that break your run. No, no offense, Falkirk, but you know it's got to come to an end at one point, and it'd be an amazing. I mean, it's incredible what Falkirk have done, realistically. Nobody saw that. I mean, Flappy Handman's doing a great job, isn't he, John? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, what was it you called him in one of the podcasts? A penguin or something? The penguin, aye. Right? The penguin. And his penguin. daughter got in touch. Oh, no, the daughter got in touch. For no, a reason that was a different I, reason, that George. That was a different reason when I, when I, I oh, as, right. said that he was uh, perhaps enjoying pleasuring himself watching a goal and his daughter his daughter tattooed me in the shoulder and said, and said I heard what you said about my dad oh, I'm very very sorry about that sir but that says sorry. to me that he's covering something up <laughs> <laughs> but there might be an element of truth there well that's yeah, very true that's very true George, George one, one week you did actually come up and uh Conversation. Well, it wasn't last week, John, was it? It was the episode Ewan was on, preview and hearts. And I think we were looking ahead, thinking about Morton. And what we said was, if Falkirk keep this invincible run going, the next time we play Morton at Falkirk, um, John's going to try and organise for you to do some sort of DJ set in the stadium as a celebration of the invincibility. Oh, uh, wow. And Morton comes along. So we've got these that? new flood lights, Definitely. George, that you can turn into disco lights like they have at Celtic Park. So we could have the GBX. Yeah, we rave at half time. We we'll get the GBX going at half time. Get the tunes Aye. going. Then take it to City. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Party on the city afterwards. Aye. <laughs> Let's make it happen. So there we go. Uh, jo- uh, tell you what, if there we go. We'll get the, the the gig booked for George to come down to the stadium. You can get a bit of hospitality, George. We'll sort that out for you, and then we can get the GBX going at half time. Get the disco lights on the go, and then, like you say. We'll get down to the Martel afterwards. I don't think the Martel's there anymore. It's no, it's no, three clubs it's, in it's the no. Last time I played it was the Temple. C- 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 oh, yeah. Mate, City's not even there anymore. It's bloody uh, XOXO now. Is that right? Is City not there? Because I played yeah. City, what, last year? Aye, City's all mm-hmm. shit. I see that. I see they've uh, changed part of the venue though. It's now going to be called the Terrace, and they're going to have. I think they've got. Um, Stone Roses um, are playing there. Is it the Stone, Stone Roses, Roses, Stone Roses playing, playing, John? Saturday. Yeah, yeah, they're playing there. So there you go, George. You'll get booked there. So I'm, I'm pretty sure. That'd be classic. I kind of go on Saturday because I know you and me were going to go, ah. but uh, I'm playing Ibiza on Saturday. So. Oh, there you go. Green or Ibiza? Where, where should it be? Uh, I know. Shit, shit, be new. Eh? Oh, ah, it's, it's tough, mate. It's tough. <laughs> But right, well, George, thank you for coming on Falkirk Daft. Uh, really, really Thanks for having me. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. And Ross, it was lovely meeting you, pal. Me too, pal. Thank and you so good much. Good luck with the season, guys. Thanks, Cheers, John. George. George Bowie, everyone, on Falkirk Daft. This is Falkirk Daft. With Behind the Wall. Stay local, eat and drink global. So there we go. Another edition of Falkirk Daft wrapped up um good podcast i thoroughly enjoyed it and we all know that brad spencer is on fire and uh, before we go though ross has been running a caption competition and um, if you're listening to the audio version of this this will not make sense but i'll describe the picture which you had the caption if you're watching the youtube version here it is but the actual picture that you need to caption was from yesterday and it was a picture of liam henderson having his nose pulled by Cole Donaldson. And Ross Essentially, Lee, yeah. the best caption for that picture. So, Ross, what have we got? We've got a few entries that have come in since we've only put this up this morning. And uh, we did say whatever was the best one, um, they can get themselves a, a bucket of beer in the Falkirk Daft uh, beer bucket at the next home game against the United. So, yeah, we've got a few entries come in. So, we've got, um, you got a go, but I've got your nose. That's, that's not too bad. Uh, smell that, lad. Smells like another victory for the Navy Blue and another team humped. Uh, keep sniffing out the goals. Uh, Hendo, same again next week. Oh, tweak. I like that. I like that. That was a wee yeah, pun yeah, from uh, yeah, yeah. 
David Hamilton there. Uh, Scott McElroy, here's more of a sniff than the keeper got, Hendo. Love that <laughs> one. That's a good one. Uh, a friend of the podcast, Brendan, he says, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you again, Liam, goal or no goal, you're still not getting the full <laughs> after armband at the end of the game. It's for the kids. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Tyler, uh, Hendo, Hendo knows we're going up. Very good. Uh, and uh, Stu Bucks, nice goal, but wait, you've got a massive boogie hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm torn between Brendan and Scott. So Scott's was, here's more of a sniff than the keeper got Hendo. And Brendan's was, I'm not going to tell you again, Liam, goal or no goal, you're still not getting the Falkirk daft armband at the end of the game. It's for the kids. Who are you thinking, John? You pick a winner. I, I like Scott's. Do. I like Scott. Scott's. That, that's very good. Very good. He's more of a sniff right, so than the keeper got Hendo. Brilliant. Scott McElroy, then. Here's more of a sniff than the keeper got Hendo. Brilliant. Fantastic. Brilliant. 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 Well done, Scott. You won that bucket of beers courtesy of Falkirk. That. There you go. Um, thank you very much for listening to this week's show. You'll get us an Apple Spotify or a get podcast. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that jazz as well. Buy merch as well, merch.falkertdaft.co.uk. If that is your thing, you want to wear something a bit different to the match, we've got Falkert Daft t shirts, hoodies, dog bowls, you name it, we've got it up. Can you wear a dog bowl? I don't think you do, I need to get a bad dog bowl, I think. And one of those dog bandanas, you can get a Falkert yes, Daft dog true. bandana. Love to see that on a dog. Uh, Merch.falkertdaft.co.uk is where you get all those details. And if you want Falkert chat throughout the week but without the podcast, get on our Discord channel. You can chat to... I think there's over 200 members in there now. All sorts mm. of chat. There's something weird going on about Robbie Much in there. There's always chat about Robbie Much coming back to the comments. There's a running joke about Robbie Much going on in the, in the chat. Um, but yeah, get involved. It's good, good bit of banter in there if you fancy that as well. All the details are in the description. That's it for this week. On to Capo for next week. Hopefully, we're back here next week talking about forty-two and not out. That'd be amazing. Uh, but in the meantime, if you want to get in touch with us, John at Focusdaft.co.uk, Ross at Focusdaft.co.uk. If you want sponsorship or anything like that get in touch and we can sort you out as well obviously thanks to our sponsors as always behind the wall and the Falkirk football fans in training but until next week Ross Wayne what do we say? Expect the unexpected buddy as always. Oh I thought you could say Brad Spencer's on fire but... <laughs> This is Falkirk Daft with Behind the Wall and the Falkirk football fans in training